Libra, welcome to your end of October 2021 general tarot reading. It's Raina here. So the other day I did a, um, a video just specifically on the full moon in Aries. And uh, I was mentioning if you are a Libra or Aries person that this could be especially potent for you in the area of relationships. Whenever there is an opposition, which is what happens at the time of the full moon, we're talking about relationships because there is a projection. You know, there's one and there's the other. That's what an opposition is. And um, this happens a lot where someone has an emotion and they say, no, you're the cause of it. Or, you know, so that's what blame is and that kind of thing. So it's a very interesting dynamic. And um, I just wanted to mention that in the context of this time period, because this is in the end of the month, so it would make sense that um, it might come up for you in some way along these lines, you know. Okay, so I just want to cut these cards and go like this. Oh, wow. I really like the full... As you can see the not that you need to see the names of the cards, but just in case that does something for you. Okay, I'm gonna pull these down so I can pull this up. So the heart of the matter is the seven of wands. I actually got three out of the six cards are wands, which is fire energy which is uh, the signs of Aries. There we go. That's a full moon that activates, by the way, um, the, the, not the full, well, the full moon can be something similar, but the fire energy activates the self. And Aries is the, the house of the self, the first house, which has to do with being an individual. Libra is a sign of, couples. So a Libra person a lot of times is very skilled, adept at having relationships with others and really getting along with people. But being, you know, standing alone, being independent, that can be difficult sometimes for the sign of Libra. And so with the phrase that came into my mind was getting along, going along to get along. And sometimes you have to take a stand. You're not in a, a alignment with uh, those around you. And you, you have to um, maybe uh, in this case, this is, can be a card of incoming, you know, somebody is trying to put something onto you trying to criticize you or what have you. And not to say that all criticism is unwarranted, but the way that I look at this card is, is that it's being used for a reason to keep that person on edge, not constructive criticism, in other words. And so there's a defensive posture here. And, um, when I look at the past position, the three, the three cards on top, it really seems to me, if it is a relationship, that it's a relationship with your boss or the work environment more than the home front. Uh, I don't know. I'm trying to think. What is... So you, Pisces is your sixth house, is it not? Um, so you did have a transit there in September. I don't know if that has... I mean, a full moon there. So I don't know if that had anything, has anything to do with anything. In the past position, we have the Six of Wands. This is a card connected to Leo. It's a card of receiving accolades, um, being heralded in some way, you know, some kind of success coming your way. But you acknowledging that success and embracing it, um, not shying away from it. So, um, what that, what that says to me is this idea of someone who feels worthy of receiving 
uh, whatever it is that they're getting. And then um, we have here a card where it's like kind of standing your ground. So it might be something where you're, I, I was going to say in the limelight, but whatever, you, you know, you get this kind of recognition, let's say in the workplace and on the home front, you're dealing with somebody who's envious, who feels threatened by your success as if your success diminishes their worth. Um, and then what happens when that, when somebody does that, the person who's, who's receiving it, if that person is cunning enough and they know your weak spots, they can actually find something about you that you need to improve upon and try to really make it out to be the worst thing ever. And, and, you know, put you on the defensive so, you know, put you down so that they can feel better about themselves. Now, obviously, that's a low vibration. Um, there's a saying, and I just can't, I can't remember it. Uh, but it's basically that you can tell who your friends are, you know, when you, when you have the success, you know, who is cheering you on, something like that. And who is all of a sudden making snide remarks. So I'm sure a lot of Libras watching this are empaths just because you're interested in spiritual matters. And as a fellow empath, um, I think even if we know something is a manipulation or, you know, intellectually, intellectually we know that the person is doing something, it can trigger something within ourselves that asks us, you know, that makes us question, okay, maybe I am, um, maybe I'm really not, uh, I was given something prematurely or I didn't really deserve it. You know what I mean? Um, people saying things like, oh, well, you're a woman, you got, uh, affirmative action or, um, <laughs> I'm, that just came, I don't know why I said that, but I'm just saying, um, things, people can say the craziest things or they, they might just say it even more subtly than that. And it makes you wonder what, well, maybe, maybe I didn't really achieve what I thought I achieved. Um, but it's interesting. Uh, I want to say one thing about that seven of wands, because I have another deck that I use quite a bit called the Morgan Greer deck. And um, I'll just pick, I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with the stack. It doesn't have any borders and it has that. And it's very colorful. But the Seven of Wands and that deck, no, I don't know if that's the deck. I think it's a different deck. I have a deck that depicts the Seven of Wands as a single flame. And I see that as the eternal flame that burns within us, um, that is our, our greatest hopes and wishes. And it can't be extinguished by the outer world, but we have to tend that flame. So I almost see that the seven of uh, wands is tending that inner flame because <clears throat> even if there's like some kind of strife around you that you still can, um, have the presence of mind to really want to um, tend the flame of your um, what you feel you came here to do for instance the higher message is the knight of pentacles and this is a very practical card this is associated with Taurus and um, what this suggests to me is that the spiritual lesson here is that, you know, you um, tend to your own garden and you do the work that is before you. So this, since this is a very practical Taurus kind of um, situation, it's really about getting up, going to work, wash, rinse, repeat. Like you're losing yourself in your work in a positive way, not escaping per se, but it's just keeping that rhythm going. And if this is something um, work-related, if you are 
let's say you got a promotion and that's what the six of wands represents and that has set the that has like triggered the demons <laughs> I'm not, sorry if I'm calling your coworkers demons, but um, they might they might resemble that remark. And um, you feel like you can't stay there, then the Knight of Pentacles would be that you just have this practical course of action. Maybe you say inside of your head for the next six months, I'm going to just um, work, do really good work. I'm going to have a great work ethic. I'm going to show up, but I'm just going to do my work. I'm going to go home. I'm going to save my money. And then I'm going to um, leave this environment because it's not good for me. And so the Knight of Pentacles as a spiritual message is just about getting in that um, grounded flow. What crosses you is the Hermit, which is connected to another earth sign, Virgo. And it's, I mean, it's the card of the... Of the um, the seeker, the person who is looking within for, you know, their own inner light, their wisdom. And it's in the challenge position. So what that means is that you may be um, avoiding looking at some of these things that you need to be looking at because they are giving you um, some guidance about what you need to be doing right now. And you're not seeking it for whatever reason. Perhaps you're just not that type of person. You might believe in God, but you don't have that kind of um, philosophical, religious, spiritual bent. And maybe you're too much in your mind as an air sign. And you need to, to start looking that, at that because that really puts things in context. It's not about superstition or um, giving away your power. It's about looking at the the bigger picture of life like you know what is it that we're doing when you have success what does that really mean is it really all about you and if it is about you which you you know who are you and this is another thing with libra is this you know trying to find oneself through the other and it sometimes people luck out and they have a partner who is very um, spiritually adept, very intuitive, and they can help you. It's almost like a spiritual teacher to see, who, you know, to to cultivate that understanding of who you are. But a lot of times, you, you know, you're going to get a projection from somebody else. Now, it might, it might be a nice projection. They may paint you in a great light. But it's not necessarily who you really are. It's filtered through their eyes. So, um, yeah, you know, because I'm getting three, you know, three out of the six cards are fire, wands, energy. I'm getting the search for the individual here. What is coming in is the two of wands. This can be at a crossroads, maybe between, um, I was going to say between a rock and a hard place, <laughs> trying to decide, even sometimes this can even be like for relocation purposes. Um, and you, you know, if you have that opportunity, you may, um, jump at the chance because if you have any kind of strife in your office, you may feel like putting a little distance between you and other people is a good thing. Um, if you feel at a crossroads within your relationship, I think the outcome card is kind of like telling me that you're going to go in a new direction. The Fool is the, the real first card of the tarot in the Major Arcana. The Unknown Quantity, the um, Zero Point, and... It's like the slate is wiped clean and you are embarking on a new adventure in your life. And uh, actually, in October, 
um, you have had your, your new moon. So there you go. That's one aspect of it. And the Fool card, interestingly, is connected to the planet Uranus, which is very offbeat, the ruler of Aquarius. So it's a very much like doing one's own thing and not conforming to society. It's, you know, being footloose and fancy free to the, to the nth degree of, you know, traveling light and not really paying attention to where you're going. You know, the person's about to walk off the cliff. Looks like the dog is warning the person who's traveling. But the person is holding a white rose. And I think that's supposed to symbolize purity or innocence. And, uh, you know, it kind of reminds me of the Page of Cups in a way, on an emotional level, of this idea of trusting that everything is going to turn out uh, all right. So if you resonate with this, if you feel like you're at a crossroads, Libra, um, probably the best thing you can do is um, strive to be your authentic self. And that will lead you in a particular direction that is what you want at this time in your life. And maybe um, this is a midlife crisis for some people where you just um, have been doing something that at one time you enjoyed, but now doesn't resonate with you and you're ready to move on. So anyway, um, I hope that this resonated. If you'd like a private reading, the link is below. Take care. Bye.